strong for Sandra. Your first come, uh, your first uh, kids come strong. It's because both of the people are buying for their kids. And who's buying for the kids? It's always mothers. So why don't you keep uh, the, the two departments adjacent to each other? I'm the owner of Woolworths, Lady Brenton Puta de Chava. I'm the last born in, uh, in my family. It's six of us. And uh, I've been very close to my father. May his soul rest in peace. Ever since um, I came to realize that, okay, I'm a human being, my father has always told me that I'm the best. I've always been a seller. I've always been an entrepreneur. At the age of six, I used to sell uh, cakes around uh, the area that we're staying. We used to have a big orchard at home, and uh, you'd find that, okay, we're not allowed to actually pick the ones from... Uh, from the tree, and then I'll take the ones on the floor, watch them and sell them around. So I always had money, I always like, uh, used to borrow, borrow my brothers and everybody else. My family wanted me to be a lawyer. And I had to just go to law because they wanted me to do that. So I went, I registered uh, BA Law, and I remember the second week I met uh, some girls and they were talking about uh, the BA communications and stuff, and I stopped them and then we talked about it and I said, I think this is really me, I'm not really a lawyer. As much as I'm a talkative, but this is not me. And then I just went, I did register without telling anybody. They only realized when the results uh, came in that I'm not doing law anymore. I'm actually doing uh, communications. I grew up in a family whereby I was told that I was the best. The ego has always been high. I would meet people and I would just click with people like immediately. Would go as friends, go meet new people. But I'm telling you, by the end of the day, I would have like, okay, 10, 10 15 friends. I was actually seeing myself as... Um, running a communications company, you know, I'm helping people all over, but I do not really see myself as uh, an entrepreneur what I am today. Really, it's something that came through as uh, the time went on. But then I was just excited that, okay, I want to own my own company, I want to do some advertisement, I want to do communication strategies, you know, I could figure out everything that was wrong in government and everything, and I really thought, okay, I'll be able to change the whole, uh, the whole, the whole department and stuff. It didn't work out to be that at all. I've always been a Woolies person. I've always bought uh, things from Woolworths. Uh, I used to love the underwear. It was uh, the best. So the other time when I was still at the varsity, we went to, to Woolworths with some friends. And then when we walked in, it was a bunch of girls and boys, and they were sort of like doing a floor walk. Okay, now I understand it's a floor walk. Back then, I was just seeing people roaming about the store. And you could see that, okay, somebody's literally like, okay, taking people through the whole store. And then on our way out, we met uh, one of the girls and we asked her, what, are you, what the hell are you doing here? She told us that, okay, there are Woolworths uh, <coughs> trainees. They've just been appointed and then they're going to train in everything. Okay, fine. Sort of like, okay, draw, sort of like interest in me. And then I asked her, how do you go about this? And then he told me that, okay, you just need to apply. They normally advertise that on uh, newspapers and stuff. And uh, I said, okay, fine, I'll look for that. And that was it, and I mean, I went back to school and I forgot about Woolworths and stuff. Until after we decided to dismantle our company. Then uh, on a Sunday, I bought the newspaper and then I saw the ad. And uh, that's uh, when I immediately decided to, to apply. And I applied. I got the job and I started uh, training as a Woolworths uh, store manager. First, uh, the first two weeks was not easy at all. Because now it's, it's uh, okay, there are already permanent managers. We are trainees, and we have a whole lot of people who have been in Woolworths for 20, 30 years. And I mean, whenever you try to like, okay, tell them to do something, they'll tell you that, what is it that you know about Woolworths? We've been here, we know better, you're not supposed to do this. They were so negative all the way. Until such time that I decided, okay, fine, I should just identify the, the key persons in this and try to befriend them. Perhaps my life will be easy. And that's exactly what I did. And I started befriending them and they started to be easy with me because I needed them as well for my training because they were knowledgeable. They've been with the brand, they knew a number of things. The problem was just that, okay, they were not prepared to change. Whenever you come up with anything that is new, they'll tell you that, okay, this is not how we do it in all words yet. You, you've been told that, okay, we have to change certain things. But I, I, I started to soften them. I started to, okay, befriend them and I had a different approach working with them, and uh, that's how I managed to fit into that love. Learn a couple of things, and uh, perhaps after a year or so, 
I'm going to move out and uh, look for something else. But it turned out to be something else. I just fell in love with what I do. I just fell in love with what I do. The most challenging thing is, um, I think I was uh, four months with Woolworths. That's when they opened the second branch in Bloemfontein. And they had to like, okay, take some of the managers to the new branch and uh, the other side to remain. I, I was dying to go to the new branch, a new mall, you know, it's a high class, everything. And then I was told that, unfortunately, you're going to stay here. And, you know, I was furious asking why. I said, it's because it's not that you're black, but it looks like you understand the market better. So it would definitely benefit Woolworths. I said, okay, it's fine. You know, I just said, okay, it's a challenge. It's okay. So it was just, uh, I think we were left with, it was the store manager and uh, the administrator and the two of us. We had to run that whole store. That basically means we had to, like, okay, do everything from operations to admin. I was still a trainee. I did not know a lot of things. And I had to, like, okay, fend for myself because I'm a very inquisitive person. I was just uh, touching everything and I would play around with systems and everything until such time that I managed to master everything. And uh, that was quite interesting. And uh, I'm one person who enjoys teaching people. I don't want to, I'm lazy by nature. One would really think that I'm a hard worker, but I am very lazy because uh, I always try to make it the point that I teach my people how to do everything. And that's when I started to like, okay, identify <coughs> the problems in the store the lack of skills and everything else. And then I started training people, people who never thought in their entire life they would touch a computer. That's when they started to like, okay, operate the computers and everything else. And that really made me feel good, that I made a difference in a, a lot of people's lives. Most of them were, they were casuals. And uh, I negotiated that they give them a, a better position. And they started to like, okay, work better. Because they've been there, they've been working for rulers for more than eight years, and they were still casuals. They were disorientated and stuff. But the minute we started to give them something else, that's when everything changed. And that was seen in cells and everything else, the way we were operating. I was uh, five years with Woolworths, but I was sort of like uh, not getting disorientated. Things were not really going my way. Because I remember when the store manager left, I really thought that was my position, that I was overlooked. So I was, uh, I was very bitter, angry, and everything else. So I told myself that, okay, I don't think there's still uh, a future for me here. And then that's when I started to, to apply for other jobs. And um, I went for one interview. I got that job. And after getting the job, I spoke to them that, okay, I can only start after two months. I had to, like, okay, check my things and everything else. Okay, how much am I going to get and stuff. So I was just waiting for the right time. And I was supposed to start uh, in government after two, two, two months. And then that's, one, that's when one of uh, the newly appointed franchisee came to our store because uh, he was supposed to open the store and uh, his stock was late, so we had to assist him. And we're just talking, and then that's when he said, what are you still doing here? I said, well, what else can I do? Why don't you join the franchise world? And then I asked him, where the hell am I going to get the money? I said, what are banks for? And it's sort of like, okay, you know, drew that thing that, okay, I can actually do it. So the interest started to, like, okay, grow then. And uh, the guy was very nice. The next day he called me. Did you really give uh, my idea a thought? I said, yeah, I thought of it, and I'm going to apply. And I applied, and I received a response. Said, okay, we've received your, your application. You are amongst uh, the 190 whatever people who have applied. But after two weeks, that's when we received another email saying they're changing the way they're doing their selection. They're now going to advertise on newspapers, so you should just react on that. For whatever reason, the advert, the advert came out and uh, identified Lady Brent because I grew up in Lesotho, so I know, I know that site, and I said, okay, I'm interested because it was a number of stores. Then I applied for that, and um, here I am today. <laughs>